So today is a work day on assignment one. So we're going to try to get quite a bit done. The first thing we need to do is an, have an idea for our composite landscape. And then we're going to sketch that idea out after we found some references that are high enough resolution to be useful. And then we'll start layering those references up together and then cleaning up the edges between them and then playing with colors and lighting so that they all match and make a believable scene. The requirement, kind of like your, your line art jumble, is that you have a minimum of five references that are each pretty big components of the full landscape and that you layer them together in a way that makes the scene the way you want. So you have to start with your idea, just like with the line art jumble, you had to pick a banned book to base your imagery on. Here you have to decide what kind of fantasy setting you want. Is it futuristic? Is it set in the past? Is it off planet? Does it have uh, flora, fauna? things that are different than what we can see in the real world. Now, fantasy can mean anything you want it to. You know, it's not just a photograph of a real place, and we're not trying to recreate a real place, but we can certainly use things from real places and put them together into our fantasy. So I have my uh, ideas here, sketching this out on the board for you. I want a moody, colorful forest. I want unusual trees in scale and shape. I want moss and sulfur pools. I want it to be at dusk. So the when is important, thinking about kind of the mood and the lighting of the imagery you want. It's really good to have kind of diffused lighting for concept art instead of really direct lighting. If you have like noonday sun, then you're going to have to have crisp cast shadows on everything you find. And that's going to really limit the kind of source material you can use. And then you want to think about like just how you want it to feel, right? So I want it to feel dangerous, muggy, and beautiful. Maybe there's a different galaxy in the, in the stars above. And then you want to find high quality reference images. So what do I mean by that? They need to be at least 1500 pixels in the smallest dimension. Why? Because the goal is always to print these, have these print quality, not just screen quality. And we want them to be a minimum of 300 pixels per inch at 8 by 10 inches. 1500 pixels does not quite fill 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch, but it will fill enough to be a component of your landscape. It also reminds you, you don't want to just use one landscape that you find, like this one, for instance. This is 1920 pixels by 1200 pixels. It's in the public domain. It's an image from NASA. Any of you could use this image if you want. It's just barely big enough. So if I download it, I include it for a few reasons. I include it so you remember that public domain images can be used for any purpose whatsoever without any need for attribution. So if I view it at actual size and preview here, you see how it doesn't quite even fill my screen. So if I zoom in on it, you can see the pixels. And this is actually using um, land rover imagery from the Mars rover and then NASA artists compositing a fantasy image of what uh, sunrise might look like on Mars, right? So that's not the kind of photography that the, the Mars rover gives us yet. So this is about the minimum size you would want because I could, for instance, just use like this foreground crater. What I don't want to do is take this whole image and then just plop different trees on it. So that's what I call a sticker sheet approach because that's relying too much on one image. So instead, we want to make it more like a puzzle piece combining these different images. That's why I, I say when you're thinking about it, think foreground, middle ground, background. So here are some cartoon examples. Because concept art is a lot like background art for animation. You can have a foreground focused landscape, a middle ground focused landscape, or a background focused landscape. But notice it's the middle ground focus that really gives you the three clearest layers of depth. 
And they don't actually take a whole lot of elements to tell you that, right? So I think mine's going to be pretty much like this, you know, a middle ground focused landscape. So next is finding your resources. I definitely recommend Pixabay as a place. I recommend Pixabay because everything here is going to be already large enough. So if I look up Moss Forest, I don't need to, to limit my tools at all because I'm not going to get that many results. There's actually, there, there are a lot of results of most Moss Forest. There's 5,541 of them. Ooh, yeah, there's some really nice ones. Now, I should have looked at this earlier. So if I open these up in a new tab, which is always helpful. I can see them fully. Now I want to combine moss and sulfur. So the other thing I might search for in a Pixabay tab, I'll go ahead and open a new one while well, this is being slow to load. The other thing I'll look for is sulfur pools. Because a lot of people share their landscapes, right? And this I have done a search for, and there's only eight images of sulfur pools, but some of them are really useful. All right. So you click on the ones, you open them in a new tab that you think you're interested in, and then you can go to free download. And the largest image here is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. So that's definitely a good quality one. But when I look at it here, I might think, oh, that's an awful lot of green. So maybe there's something that's a little bit more interesting, like this dandelion one. This might be a really good foreground element to put everything else behind. There are these beautiful ones with the waterfalls, but remember I don't want running water because it will look like it's, it's a figurative element, something we expect to be moving. So I want to avoid that unless I'm animating later. But something like this, with these kind of riverside, it has a pool underneath it, this really strong rock. It's got these other colors. If it's large enough, and it is, you know, 3,000 by 4,000, then I can use that rock as maybe one of my elements and just avoid that, that stream and waterfall in the background. So you download them. They go to your downloads folder. Then I'm going to organize them because my computer is a lot more full than your computer's into my assignment one folder, into my references. And if I think they're particularly useful, I'm going to mark them with green. That's what I like to do, green for go. And then I like to sort them by image tag. So it will sort all of my colored ones into one place. So, so far I found 23 or so images that are high enough quality. I only need five, and I've marked about 11 of these as ones I think are, are highly probable to use. Everything from foreground to middle ground to backgrounds. Now that I have that, I'm ready to sketch. So I'm going to sketch digitally. just so I can show you on this. So I'm gonna set up my tablet and I'll show you how you can grab a tablet from the back of the lab, plug it into the USB port in your keyboard and do this with me. Or you can just sketch on a piece of paper. If you want to digitally sketch, this is how you would go about it. I already took a photo of the sketch I started on the whiteboard and I'm going to open that photo with Photoshop. The beauty of digital art and digital sketching is you can start it in your sketchbook, put it into the computer, continue it in the computer, on and on. It just needs to open up. Click 
those other programs I'm not using. Had a busy weekend. Once I have the sketch open in Photoshop, I can flesh it out. So I started the sketch with my theme. Now I'm just going to make a layer. I'm using the tablet. I'm going to use the brush tools. The first time we've used that. I'm going to keep it at a fairly low opacity between 65 and 70 percent. And I'm going to use a brush. I'll just use a really typical brush. I'll go up to the very top, the standard brushes, and I'm going to use the hard round brush that is pressure sensitive. You can see that it's tapered. There it is for pressure. So the size I can set to varying degrees, but then the harder I press, the thicker it will be. That's what pressure sensitivity means, just like a pen. All right, so to sketch, I need to see my reference. And I like to do this usually actually by hand, so I'm not so cramped here. But what I do is I'll view my references and then prefer my ones that are tagged. If I need to make those bigger, I can go to View Options and make the icons bigger. Close the space between them and kind of try to fit them all on the screen. There we go. And then as I'm sketching, I'll do a horizontal sketch first. Actually, maybe I'll do a vertical sketch first. You're only required to have one sketch, but it's helpful to try it out in different ways. So this is thumbnailed. So I'm drawing a box within the page. So I don't need to draw very big. And I'm thinking, OK, which of these elements do I want to get this dangerous, muggy feel? Let's see. And I've got a few more references than this. Whoops. So I've got background, foreground. Let's start with some foreground elements. So what if we have that rock, and I put that rock right here? So I'm going to call that rock. <laughs> Sometimes I'll number them. So that's number one. That's the one I just downloaded. And then I'll name that file. So it's easy to find. It just depends on how organized you need to be. So that's one rock. Next, in the middle ground, I think I want this temple from Angkor Wat. It's a ruined temple in Cambodia. And maybe I want this one with the roots. So maybe I want to flip it. And I can even preview that in, in preview by flipping the negative, just like I can in Photoshop. And that should update the preview. But anyway, I can have um, maybe some roots there. Or maybe I want this temple just in this middle ground here. Oops. There we go. OK, so I'm going to very delicately kind of sketch in where I want that tall tree to be, like right there. And this is going to be reference two. So your sketch can be incredibly basic as long as you know what it's referring to, because it's going to be your plan for putting things together. So that'll be two temple. OK, next, that's kind of middle ground. Maybe I want this kind of beautiful rainbowy tree. That keeps keep having to remind it what brush I'm on. So this lovely tree here is still middle ground. And this hillside, it's kind of all this, takes up about this much space. I'll call that three. And I'll say three color tree. So I'm using these three references so far. And then behind that, I might want this. 